Today I want to talk about some of the frustrations that we might feel during quarantine when we can't get access to all of the ingredients we need to cook all of the things we want to eat. I was absolutely seduced recently by a photo on Smitten Kitchen of a beautiful tomato tart. I was having dreams about how good this thing must taste, but then I looked down through the ingredient list and it was nope, no, don't have it, can't get it, oh well. Literally the only thing on the ingredients list that I had access to was the tomatoes. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that while baking is chemistry, there are substitutions, but they're very specific. Cooking is more like jazz, it's improvisational. We can sort of like make improvements or substitutions or embellishments. So I thought I'm gonna go into the kitchen and see what I can find to try to rustle up this tart or some version of it. I have to say, I'm not sure if it's going to be an unmitigated disaster or a wild triumph, but I think it's time to head into the kitchen and give it a shot. And I thank you for attending my bed talk. Hey, welcome to the kitchen. Let's get started on this tomato tart. It's so pretty, you guys. I'm super excited to give this a try. but. As we discussed, I looked through the ingredient list and the only thing I had on this list was the tomatoes. The tomatoes which um, are lying on a baking sheet because I've salted them and I need to go ahead and blot them dry with another paper towel. Um, because the last thing we want is a very soggy tart. So we're just gonna blot all this moisture away and get them nice and dry. Okay. So, to go through the um, ingredients for the filling, tomatoes, check. Salt, check. It calls for garlic, basil, parsley. No, no, no. But what I do have is some pesto that I made earlier. Um, so I made pesto with the ingredients that I had because I didn't have any of this. Um, it's also calls for Dijon mustard. Um, don't have that either. Using the spice, spicy brown stuff, because what are you gonna do? And then it says two ounces of hard cheese, thinly spliced or coarsely grated. Um, didn't have that either. So I have this cheese blend from Kraft that's described as quote unquote Italian. So that's gonna have to do. Um, oven's preheated to 375. The first step on here says to make the crust. I can't make the crust. I have literally zero of the ingredients to make the crust. I have no space to roll out a dough because if you watched my video about baba ganoush and you watched me attempt to roll out cracker dough in this tiny kitchen, then you were uh, exposed to some enjoyable comedy, but I just don't have room to roll out a tart shell. So I've decided to give this a try. These are flour tortillas. I was not able to get what I normally use, which is a frozen pie crust that comes in those um, foil pie pans. Those are super convenient. But what I want to try to do instead is see if we can't shingle these in a way that's gonna help us to form a crust. So, I'm gonna fold this in half. And cut them like that and see if they'll shingle. But before I do that, what I wanna do is butter this pan because nothing we do here matters at all if we can't get it out of the pan. So I'm just gonna use a piece of the butter wrapper and give this a nice once over. Um, actually, you know what? This had very little on it. <laughs> Let's try with an actual stick of butter. Let's give this a nice go round so that our finished product browns like a crust and releases from this pie dish. Hopefully this will work, fingers crossed. But the star of the show is the tomatoes. The tomatoes are looking lovely and are from our friends at Stone Ledge Farm. Support your local CSA. Okay, so, we butter the dish, and then all I'm going to do is cut these tortillas 
And it's important to note, these are flour tortillas, not corn. If we think about what's in a tart crust and what's in a flour tortilla, they're not far off. So I'm just gonna try to see what happens if I layer them in like this, right? And they're gonna overlap to minimize the gaps. I think I'll probably need one more, two more. So I'm just folding it in half, giving it a nice straight cut, and then layering it in. I think one more. Look at that. I could be onto something. Ooh, we want to layer these in a very deliberate way. You'll see why in a second. Okay, and then we're going to take one more and place it on the bottom like that. Now, today on the Food Network Instagram, they did an Instagram Live with Katie Lee. And I was able to ask her, what did she suggest in the interest of avoiding a soggy bottom in a tomato tart? So what she recommended was par, ba par baking the crust, meaning you uh, blind bake it. You put weights in the crust once you formed it, and you allow it to bake for a little while so it firms up, so that when you put the tomatoes in and they release all their juices in the oven, it doesn't sog out your crust. But that's not an option for us because we can make a crust. The other thing that she suggested was what's called an egg wash. So I've just combined an egg and some water, and I'm just gonna brush it on here to see if that'll help us seal it so that when we do start roasting the tomatoes in here, everything's gonna hold together, not get super soggy, firm up nice, hold in place. Keep This is the glue that's gonna hopefully hold this bizarre riff on a tart together, right? Okay, so that's our nice egg wash. The instructions say that our next step is mustard. It calls for Dijon. Don't have it. <laughs> so we're gonna try this brown mustard. And I love mustard in all kinds, so I'm not mad about this variation at all. I'm just gonna use my pastry brush to sweep it around a bit. Next step is the cheese. So I have this prepackaged shredded cheese because it's all I could get right now. And I'm not gonna beat myself up about it. Just gonna get this on in a nice layer. The next thing it calls for is this beautiful sounding parsley and basil. Sorry camera two. Pesto, but again, didn't have any of the ingredients for that. Uh, so I made this garlic scape one instead. And on the topic of this garlic scape pesto, I don't mind telling you, it called for pine nuts, didn't have them. <laughs> it called for walnuts, um, which I also didn't have, but I did keep in my freezer a large container of mixed nuts. That mixture did have walnuts in it. Did I go through and pull them out? No, I did not. I just went ahead and use the mixed nuts, which had like cashews and almonds and, and you know what? It tasted just fine. I'm actually okay with it. Um, this is probably a thicker consistency than the one the recipe makes. But again, this is going to get roasted in the oven. So we're not going to be too precious about it. In fact, we're about to cover this up with a fine shingling of these beautiful tomatoes, which I'm really excited about. Again, brought to us by our friends at Stoneledge Farm. Support your CSA, guys. Okay, so we've got egg wash, mustard, cheese, pesto, and now, last but not least, these tomatoes, which we've salted and blotted dry. So now we're just going to shingle them. I'm going to just overlap them in circles. And then when we get this in the oven, the um, tomatoes are going to get that roasted tomato flavor where it's just really strong and concentrated. 
I am just fitting these in any which way I can. Goodness, I hope I have enough. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Uh. <laughs> hmm, hold on. Let's put this guy in the middle. Yes. Hmm. Pretty. I'm excited. This looks like it could work out. Right? <laughs> okay. This could be a pass or this could be a fail, but either way, we're in it together. And either way, it's kind of pretty. I think it's cute. We made it cute. The last thing I want to add to this, just because I can't help myself and I have it, <laughs> one of the things I actually do have is this grated Parmesan cheese. And I just want to do like a fine little dusting over the top. Why not? Okay. And then last but not least, pepper. Let's get this into the oven and then we'll see where we are. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what we're working with. these tomatoes are. Look at that. Oh, it's all bubbly. Now we're just going to leave this to cool before we cut into it. Oh, look at that. Caramelized tomatoes. The crust actually turned out okay. It smells amazing. Garlic, mustard, cheese. The tomatoes have taken on like a jammy quality. They're almost chewy, like tomato candy. I just can't believe how well this turned out, even with all of our swaps. Because we buttered the pie pan so well, it had this buttery taste, kind of like a Ritz cracker. And it slid right out of the pie pan onto a plate so that I could cut it entirely across in wedges in kind of the same way you would cut a frittata. So the slices turned out so nice and clean. A nice edge. I mean, I couldn't be happier with the way the crust turned out because... I thought it was either going to be incredibly soggy to where you just couldn't even pick up a slice without all of the filling sliding off the, the crust, or I thought it'll be so crunchy that when I go to cut it, the crust will shatter into a bajillion tiny pieces, but neither of those things happened. It kind of had the texture of a really good thin crust pizza, which for a tomato tart is not a bad way to end up. I couldn't have been happier with it. The pesto tasted really good, and I didn't even really mind the brown mustard. I think this is just a lesson that, you know, the, all we can do is our best. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't, but you gotta try. Thanks for joining me, and once again, thank you for attending my bed talk. Uh -huh.